Ryan, obviously the the offense is really going to be the part of the game where you you've seen this Notre Dame team struggle for all but really one game, and 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 I wouldn't even count the UNLV game is a, an exception to that because UNLV's defense is not very good. Notre Dame missed a lot of opportunities. I don't think they played all that well offensively. Uh, just kind of overall, there were some good things here and there, but but overall it was a, a performance that didn't live up to the potential of what this team should be. Mm-hmm. Really, the North Carolina game is the one exception. If Notre Dame is going to win this game, the offense has to play better. The only way they can win without the offense playing better is if the defense just has a lights out, just completely shuts Syracuse down. You can't win if you can't score. But that's also true for Notre Dame against a very good Syracuse defense. We did the stacking up our matchup of this yesterday. The on the written version of that stacking up is online at IrishBreakdown.com. This is a tough test for Notre Dame and. This is going to be a test that says, hey, you know, Coach Reese, if you want to, um, you know, kind of be that guy that, um, you know, is who everybody thought you were and you're going to be this, you know, great offensive mind and this guy that, you know, can lead this team and do all these other type of things, then this is the kind of game where you've got to step up and perform well, Ryan. And also you mentioned the narrative changing and, and, and adjusting this is the opportunity for Tom Maurice to make the adjustments yep. and, and he's going to need to, if they're going to win, they can't just regurgitate the same game plan again. No, I mean, they can't. I mean, this is one of those situations where you're playing against a good defense. We stacked it up yesterday. Right. I mean, this is a defense where you're going to have to earn it, man. Like this, the secondary is not going to give it to you. The linebackers aren't going to give it to you. And the defensive line is going to play exceptionally hard. So I, I do think that this is a, I don't want to call it a maker to break it performance for Tommy Reese, but like, this is, if it was going to happen, it needs to happen now, right? Like this is the the couple game stretch where you need your offense to really take that next step because if you come into this game with a lackluster performance or some players aren't making plays, Syracuse has a good enough defense where they're just going to kind of do what they do, you know? Right. Like you need to make them uncomfortable. And right now you don't feel great about them having the ability to make them uncomfortable. The talent is there, but until you see it on the field, it's just a big question mark right now for Notre Dame. I, I certainly feel they're capable of it. It's just about whether or not they're going to make the necessary changes to do it. Like you said, that's going to be the key. So let's talk about what the keys are to victory for for Notre Dame in this game and looking at the offense. And the first one, number one, Ryan, it's going to be the same one as we always talk about recently, and that is start fast. And I don't even – I thought that the, the first drive last week was great, really well done. You got into a third and 10, you know, you didn't want to be there, but you made a play, you were attacked, you you pushed the tempo a little bit more than they normally do. There wasn't a ton of the scan stuff. They stayed on the script and they went right down the field and scored a touchdown. After that, it was kind of a field goal fest, right? It was just not being able to capitalize on great field position time and time again. We've talked about it before, seven drives to start the game inside the 20 yard line or inside B, uh, UNLV territory. And you only got touchdowns on three of those. And one of them was the third, the seventh, trip in there so you got to start fast and 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 look this is going to be a loud environment the carrier dome from everyone that i've ever talked to is a naturally loud environment it, you don't need a hundred thousand people for it to be loud it's indoors it's going to be a, a, a sold out stadium there's not going to be as many notre dame fans as there normally is at a syracuse game because they made the right decision of not giving up this home game which they have done so many times in the past. They gave up the home game in 2014. They gave up the the home game in 2016 in order to play in an NFL stadium with more people. They can make more money. It was a smart decision by Syracuse to say, we're going to keep this one at home because this is the chance that you have to have that home field advantage. Because when you play away from the Carrier Dome, then you start seeing a lot more Notre Dame fans showing up, right? This is going to be a very pro Syracuse crowd. It's going to be loud. It's going to be, it's going to be hopping. And what you have to do is you have to quiet them with your performance. And so the Notre Dame offense has to come out and be sharp early, move the chains, and put the ball in the end zone. That's going to be key. They're going to have to start fast. You do not want to get behind Syracuse, period, because they have the ability to to make a a, a game. They have the ability to shorten a game, Mm -hmm. right? We've talked about that. They're quite good at that, actually, at shortening games and limiting possessions with the way that they play offense. So you look at it, Ryan, and – 
if you fall behind, this isn't that's 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 going to be tough to come from behind. If you can get ahead of them, Syracuse is not a great come from behind team, and so that it adds it adds even more importance to Notre Dame getting off with a very fast start in this game. It's funny that you mentioned that about you know playing in the Carrier Dome, or apparently it's called something different than the Carrier Dome, Brian. Nope. I don't know if you nope. at <laughs> Irish Breakdown it's the Carrier Dome. I don't want to hear any JMA Wireless Dome. I don't hear any of that stuff. Carrier. So dome. I, I just saw that on Twitter yesterday. I'm like, oh, it's not the Carrier Dome anymore. Yeah. I, I had you know, no Tommy idea. Tommy said that in his press conference. He's like, yeah, it's got some other name now, but it's the Carrier Dome to me. And I'm like, you know what, Coach? For the first time all year, we're on the same page. <laughs> It's the Carrier Dome. We'll sell out the Nets. Yeah. So anyway, go ahead. Well, no, I, I was just talking to someone, I think it was last night, and they were asking me about my opinion on the game. And I said, you know, Notre Dame's been playing pretty well away from away from the home stadium. You know, on the road, they've been a pretty good football team for the most part. And then someone brought this up, and I thought it was an interesting point. They said, you know, the, the Carrier Dome, that's what they called it as well. They said that's probably going to be the most hostile environment that Notre Dame's been at this year, sort of. And I'm like, well, you know, they played Ohio State at the shoe, so I don't know if that's quite true. But right. to your point, it's going to be an interesting environment, obviously, right? You're, you're going to be playing in a pro, sta a pro uh, Syracuse stadium where, I mean, they're riding into this game, number 16 in the country. They're, you know, the team that is supposed to win this game, which is pretty wild against a – talented but inconsistent Notre Dame team like the same's gonna be rocking man and these players are gonna have a lot a lot of energy early on in this football game and one thing that I've talked about and I know we've we I think we both have talked about it some I mean we haven't talked about it last week there's just some games where Notre Dame comes in and you just don't feel the energy like you yeah. talked about it at UNLV right like they're just in warm-ups and you just don't really feel it right like there's no just not a lot of juice to what what they're kind of a looking like preparation anyway, right? So this is a very important game. Going into a road game against a top 20 team in the country in a potentially somewhat hostile environment, I agree 100%. Notre Dame, just in general, they need to silence this crowd early on or else they're going to be riding this energy because, I mean, it's been, what, four years now since Syracuse put together a quality product on the field? Like yes, it's been a 2018, few years. yeah. Yeah, it's been a few years, and this is foreign right now to them, uh, to Syracuse fans and the and the, the players and staff pertinent to what it's been over the last couple of years. So they're going to be ready. They're going to be rocking. And I agree. It's that, you know, we, we're taking it from an offensive perspective, but just from an all-encompassing perspective, you got to come out and you got to play fast. You got to knock this team in the mouth a little bit because it's going to be easy for this team if things are rolling well early to really keep capturing that energy and that mm -hmm. momentum because they have all the momentum going into this game from just how they how their season has kind of been uh, you know fulfilling how their coaching staff looks a lot better than it did coming into the year from what their coaches from what their players' confidence level is. Syracuse has a lot going for them coming into this football game, so Notre Dame has to be able to knock them down a couple of plays early on. Well, and this is also, if you look at their attendance, I, I, I kind of I chuckle at the whole most hostile environment thing. It's a 49,000-seat stadium. So with all due respect, and I know it's indoors, right? So it captures all of that noise. It keeps it indoors, and it was it was built in a way to, to, to make it loud. But uh, I'm going to still go with the 106,000 at Ohio State and stick with that one. It's the more hostile environment. However, to the point, it's a very, it's a very challenging environment, not just because of the noise, but the lighting is weird with the white top and all the, I mean, teams that play basketball, they will talk about how it's, it's got a really weird background where it's like, it's kind of hard to see the, the rim. And if you're not, you get, take some getting used to and things like that. And so I, I think there can be some challenges catching the football, right? I mean, those are going to be things to watch, you know, catching the football, fielding punts, things along those lines are going to be challenges for Notre Dame and you've got to be sharp and crisp, but you know, this is speaking of starting fast. I mean, you look at Syracuse's home crowd so far. They had thirty-seven thousand in the opener against Louisville. That's over ten thousand below their their average. They had thirty-five, uh, thirty-six thousand against Purdue, thirty-four and a half against Virginia, thirty-three against Wagner. They were way under their capacity in those games. And then it wasn't until the NC State game when Syracuse fans were finally like, "Hey, we're actually pretty good," you know. And, and then they sold it out, right? And so then obviously they since then they've lost to Clemson. So I think Syracuse fans are kind of late to the party about how good this team is. So mm -hmm. I do expect them to be pretty feverish when they play Notre Dame. It's that it's hey, we're actually pretty good combined with hey, we're playing Notre Dame, yep. and the opportunity that presents. They haven't watched a Notre Dame game on campus since two thousand and three. 
So it's mm-hmm. going to be a hop in place and, and you've got to really continue to build that energy and that emotion and that and, and build on what you did last week. Number two point, Ryan, number two key is Drew Pine has to have a good game. Now, this is a kind of a threefold type of situation, right? It's not just about Drew. That means Tom Reese has to put a good game plan together, one that Drew is comfortable with. It means letting Drew get into rhythm which is hard to do with the nonstop scan. So limit the scan. I don't think that they will, but it's important for them to do it because that's going to allow Drew to get into some kind of rhythm. So it's up to the game plan to, to be com- make him comfortable. When he does put the ball where it needs to get to, Braden Nillens, he's got to make that catch. Michael Mayer can't drop that ball in the end zone. Uh, you know, those type of things can't happen. He's going to need some help. Sometimes he's going to put the ball up. It's not a great throw, and you've got to go make a play on it like Jaden Thomas did against BYU, right? And, and – so there's going to be those opportunities. His teammates got to help him out. And then you look at Drew Pine. He's got to make the right decisions. He's got to he's got to go through his progressions. He's got to make the right reads. He's got to get the ball out on time. He's got to go through the reads with the proper timing. Not too slow, not too fast. Go with the reads with the proper timing and trust the system. Trust your teammates. Don't just immediately go to Michael Mayer when you get into a pinch. And that's also part of the game plan thing too, Ryan, is making sure that you have a game plan that understands We know Syracuse is going to have a Michael Mayer plan. How can we be prepared for that and take advantage of that, especially early, to make them pay right away for the emphasis that they're going to put on Michael Mayer? But at the end of the day, Drew's got to make the right throws. He's got to get the ball where he needs to get to. I can blame Tommy Reese for a lot of things. I can't blame Tommy Reese for a fastball to Tobias Merriweather that needs to be put high and soft. Right? That's on Drew. Right? I, I can't. I can't. Put it on Tommy. I can't put everything on Tommy Reese. Some at some point, Drew's got to step up and say, "Hey, I'm the leader of this team. I'm the quarterback. I got to go make these plays." Because if they're going to beat Syracuse, Drew. If they're going to start fast, it's going to require Drew to come out and play well early. And if they're going to put Syracuse away and hang on in the second half, because Syracuse is not going to go away, mm-hmm. then Drew's going to have to be well then to be good then too. So it's going to really require Drew Pine to have a North Carolina, even a BYU esque performance if they're going to win this game. We've seen him do it, and he's been better away from home than he's been at home. So maybe there's something to that, but he's going to have to look like he did, you know, and starts two and three as opposed to starts one, four, and five. In our stacking up show yesterday, Brian, we talked a lot about the Notre Dame passing offense gets the Syracuse pass defense. And I mean, that's the biggest differential in this football game coming in, right? It's like Syracuse has to feel good about their chances to limit the ability for Notre Dame to throw the football. You have to feel like it after the last couple games Notre Dame has had, after the consistency pretty much across the board that Syracuse has had all season and the guys that they have in their secondary. This is the matchup where Syracuse looks at it and says, we got that one. We're winning that matchup. That's ours. So what does Notre Dame need to do? They need to flip the script on it, man. That's what it comes down to, right? I mean, you've seen the moments where you're like, okay, you gave Jaden Thomas a shot. He made a big 50-50 ball. That's awesome. You've seen moments where you're like, Brayden Lindsey's open all day. You've seen Michael Mayer do what Michael Mayer does. You've seen the running backs, when you involve them in the passing game, that they're pretty good, man, and they give you a lot of different opportunities, right? There is elements of good here. And you've seen Drew Pine, when comfortable, he's a good football player, mm-hmm. when he's comfortable and he's moving along and he's in rhythm. And in this game, it's equally as important because if you have a lot of mistakes against the secondary, they'll make you pay. Mm-hmm. And this is the, the situation and the matchup where they have kind of just put a put in an ink on paper already that Notre Dame's not going to pass the ball against us. And you have to change that narrative. You have to flip the script. In order for you to come on the road and beat a number 16 team in the country, a team that you're supposed to lose to according to Vegas, right, it, you know, whatever, You need to make them uncomfortable. Making them uncomfortable is making them go, oh, they are a little better passing team than maybe we gave them credit for. They have a little more explosiveness than we maybe gave them credit for. Haven't seen it consistently, but if there's a game that you need to put it together for the whole game, this is the one because I have maintained this one. I know we talked about it yesterday. I think we both agree on it. This is the best secondary that you're going to play all year. Yeah. All year. Best one by far. And they're a confident bunch. Deuce Chestnut, Garrett Williams, they play with swagger. They do. You have to make some plays on them. You have to make them uncomfortable. You have to attack the opportunities that you have. It's paramount in this football game that Drew Pine and this passing attack gets in rhythm early, gets comfortable, and has a a consistent form of success that we haven't seen consistently throughout the season. 
Ryan, another thing is they have to generate some, they have to find ways to make big plays. I, I think the offensive line can have a day and, 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 you know, we, we didn't, we won't have in here, like you got to run the ball because that's now in the standpoint of a given, like running the ball effectively and don't turn it over are kind of like givens. You should assume that that's something they need to do right now. And I think the Notre Dame offense can do that, but there's, I don't think, however, that this team is good enough. That I don't think you can make the leap from what they've been all year to all of a sudden against the best defense you've faced since the opener to all of a sudden say, okay, now you're going to go out and just consistently put together seven, eight play drives and punch it into the end zone six times. At some point, they're going to have to generate big plays. And that's the next key is they, this is not the early in the year, they were creating big plays, but they weren't able to, they were terribly inefficient. Then the big plays have kind of gone away for the most part in recent games, and they're going to have to find a way to get back to that. Pass game-wise, run game-wise, that requires some creativity, obviously, from Tommy Reese. It requires you to get your players into some matchups that they're comfortable with, make sure that Drew Pine is comfortable with where he's going to go with the football, and then you got to execute. There are big plays to be had, but it's going to require good scheme, but also at some point in time, kind of like Charlie Jones did to, to Garrett Williams when they matched up, at some point, you just you got to make a great throw, which Garrett with the, which Aiden O'Connell did, and then your receivers got to make a great play, which is what Charlie Jones did twice in the fourth quarter to beat uh, Garrett Williams for big plays. The marks for error is very thin when you thaw on him, but it's there. So you know that means being smart. Put Tobias Merriweather and Deion Colsey on him at times. Put Michael Mayer on him at times. You know, find some things that you can take advantage of what they're doing to create some and generate some big plays. They're going to need that, obviously. If we see a heavier dose of RPOs, if we see a, a mix up of the run game, I think that is where Notre Dame can rip off some big plays. We saw Clemson do them, do that to them late in the game on on Saturday. You know, so there's opportunities for big plays against them, but you have to you have to earn them. Syracuse yep. is going to make you earn them, and Notre Dame's going to have to earn them because I just don't see this team consistently moving the ball up and down the field and getting to 30 points that way. I think they're going to need three or four big plays in this game. They don't have to necessarily result in touchdowns, although that's more ideal. Because it increases your your red zone offense isn't needed then, which has been an issue. But the big plays are going to be a key part of this game. There's no question about it. At the end of the day, and we've talked about this every single game, this is one outside of the Ohio State game where Notre Dame has more talent. Like, let's just call it what it is, right? They are a more talented team than what Syracuse has. But right now, Syracuse is playing, and I'm talking wide receiver versus secondary perspective, pass catcher versus secondary perspective. Syracuse is playing better football, obviously. But at the end of the day, you still have an advantage one-on-one -on -one athletically with some of the cornerbacks and defensive backs that, that Syracuse has. All due respect to Garrett Williams. I think he's a potential All-American. I think he's a fantastic player. I think he'll play in the NFL and he'll play for in the NFL for a long time. But at the end of the day, I will still take a matchup of Tobias Merriweather one on one with Garrett Williams and see what happens. I'll still make that. I'll still take that opportunity. And that goes for Lorenzo Styles and Brayden Lindsay and Spurts. Like there's opportunities out there. Michael Mayer into the boundary, like we talked about yesterday, right? Like that's an opportunity that I think could be on the table. And no matter how good their secondary is, you have to trust your guys to make a play one on one. And in order for them to make a play one on one, Brian, you have to put your guys in position to do it, mm -hmm. right? Like, it, I feel like the only time we've seen it is like Jaden Thomas, and he surprised you, and he made a play, and he was a great play. Let's get, let's take the shackles off a little bit, right? There's no better to inject. There's no easier way to inject confidence into a quarterback than to say, Drew, like we're just gonna let you fly, man. Let it fly. Get the ball out there. Take a shot, and if you hit one or two early, then you're rolling then you're rolling because the, the confidence will be there. And then the secondary will have to make an adjustment not to say, you know, I can't just do this and, you know, and get away with it right now. Like I have to be better in this process. Maybe I have to play a little more two man where I work, you know, a safety over top instead of bringing him down into the box. Then the, the numbers battle gets into your favor a little bit. But at the end of the day, you need to not only create explosive plays, but you need to win one-on-one -on -one matchups. That's because let's call it what it is. Syracuse is going to say a lot during this game early, in my opinion. Garrett, shut down whoever's across from you. Mm -hmm. We don't, we, you don't, you don't need much help, right? You can, you got him one on one, sure. Deuce Chestnut, you got him, right? Yep, sure, I do, I do. And you know that they're confident players, so they will be up for the challenge. In order to make Syracuse have to rethink their strategy, you have to make a couple one on one opportunities, and that's what I'm looking forward to seeing 
for, don't, does that have to be the first play of the game, but do, is there a chunk play opportunity? Is there a one-on-one shot? Do you locate one-on-one outside and just take the go and just give it, put it up there and let your guy get an opportunity to make a play? And that is on coaching. And then after that, if the coaching does make that decision, then your player has to win that one-on-one matchup. Yep. Got to win one-on-one matchups in this game. I mean, you know, you, you you say that, and it's just kind of like, man, like, how can they think that about Lorenzo Styles and Braden Lindsay? But I mean, if you've broken down Notre Dame's film the first seven weeks, you're like, yeah, I'm I'm gonna take. I mean, if you're if you if you remove yourself from from, let's say you've only watched Notre Dame this year, and you didn't watch them last year, you didn't see Lorenzo in the bowl game, you didn't see what he did last year against Virginia, North Carolina, and USC and those teams. You've only watched them this year. You've only watched Braden Lindsay this year. You're going to say, well, I'm not worried about Braden Lindsay because even when he gets open, they'll throw it to him. And then you're like Lorenzo Styles, like the kid doesn't really get separation. And when they do throw it to him, he doesn't catch the ball. And 83 is, you know, completely misused. They, you know, 15 is kind of a problem, but they've only thrown him two balls in seven games. So, I mean, why would you not trust your secondary, which is the, the to me, the best part of your football team, in my opinion? To, to 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 do anything other than to, to do one on one, and 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 also the other part of it is if you only watch Notre Dame this year, if Notre Dame can't run a ball this season, they don't score. They cannot score if they don't get the run game going. And so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe alter my coverage pre snap and and to get extra bo- bodies in the box because I do trust my not just my corners, but mm-hmm. the way that they've played this year, and the way Syracuse plays this year, I trust my safeties to be able to cover. Notre Dame slots man to man. And so those are other aspects of it too, Ryan, that allows you to then, you know, insert your 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 rover and more into the box to, you know, coming off the edge and crashing the edge and doing things like that. Cause it's not like Notre Dame's gonna pull and throw an RPO outside, at least based on what you've seen. So there's so many things that you've seen on film that you say there's no there, Syracuse would be foolish not to just say, hey, do say, hey, hey, Garrett, hey, you know, uh, Elijah, hey, jihad, jihad hey. Go lock these dudes down, right? We'll, yeah. we'll have a plan for Michael Mayer, right? We'll have a plan for 87, but I need you guys to go out and win those battles. I would do that if I was them. So for the Notre Dame receivers, it's important that they step up and play well and have their game. This is this is a great, you know, shake off all the rust or, you know, get the bad vibes or whatever the case may be. This is the kind of game that, that it, we talked about the narrative changing as a team and as an offense for the receiving core. This is a big time narrative changing opportunity for you. Because, you yeah. know, you're going to have success against Clemson next week, but with all due respect, it's not a very good secondary. Mm-hmm. This is a much better secondary right now that you're going to face. So you've got to be able to come out and, and thrive. Will they do it? Don't know. But they need to if they're going to win this game. And the last key, Ryan, is they've got to finish. And and this, this really refers specifically to drives, right? Mm-hmm. That means converting third downs, moving the chains, and when you get the ball in the red zone – you need touchdowns, not field goals. That's the key, especially early. So it kind of ties back to point number one, Ryan. They're going to have to finish. If they can come out and finish well, right, start fast, finish off drives with six you know, six points instead of three, then you're, you're going to have a chance to really get rolling. But finishing off drives with, with touchdowns is going to be a big key. And then finishing off plays. You know, Notre Dame has left a lot of, a lot of individual plays, drop passes here and there, missed blocks, missed reads. They're going to have to finish those things off and execute at a higher level. If they do that, then I do think they can move the ball relatively well. You know, if you get a chance for a big play, we said earlier, it doesn't have to be a touchdown. Let it be nice. You know, then take that pressure off your offense to then score. Because Syracuse is a pretty good red zone defense this year, partly because of how good their secondary is. Because they can just yep. go man up. They're six-foot kids with long arms. They're, they're, they present like a really wide – radius you know to throw around it can make it challenging and Notre Dame doesn't really throw to their big guys in the red zone so it's not like you can take advantage of that so you got to finish off drives you got to finish off plays you need touchdowns not field goals that's a big because I don't know how many scoring opportunities you're going to get against Syracuse so when you get them especially early you need touchdowns because what can happen Ryan is if you're able to get touchdowns early let's say Notre Dame is able to jump on Syracuse you know, 17 to seven in the first half, let's just say hypothetically, mm-hmm. you now get into situations where if you you punch one more touchdown in there in the second half and you can put Syracuse behind 24 to 10 or even 24 to 14 in the second half, now they have to get outside of their game plan. And that's where you can then have some success defensively 
at creating some mistakes and potentially turning them over, something Syracuse doesn't doesn't do. Because honestly, Ryan, they haven't had to play from behind very much this year. Right. I mean, they, they've they've been like neck and neck with people all year. Like the the, the Purdue game was like six to three, nine to six, really close, and then they kept scoring back and forth in the fourth quarter. You know, the Virginia game was a very similar deal. They were way out. They were out on NC State early. They were out on Louisville early. They were out on UConn early. They were out on, you know, Wagner early. And then they were up on Clemson early. So they they haven't had to play from behind really at all this year. So this is a chance to say, okay, let's see how good they are. Because no team has been able to get Syracuse out of their game plan. Not one. Mm -hmm. It's going to be up to Notre Dame offense to help their defense accomplish that by putting early scores on the board. So start fast by moving the ball. And then your next step is then when you do move, you put the ball in the end zone. This is this is one thing that good teams do, and this is one thing that Syracuse does really well, is they make everything difficult for you, right? Nothing's easy, which is, I mean, <laughs> if I can give a, a, co- a compliment to a team, like that's the biggest one because I mean, what Syracuse does offensively and defensively is offensively they control the tempo, they don't really shoot themselves in the foot and they keep the ball kind of moving, right? Defensively, they keep everything in front of them. They don't give up explosive plays. I mean, we saw the stat yesterday, right? They li- they give up less than 10 yards per completion on the season. They literally do not give up big plays. Keep everything in front of them. Make offense have to establish long drives to score. That's what they do, right? That's what the- has been the recipe for success. And why they've only given up 15 point something points per game up until this point, which would be a little higher if he, they hadn't played, uh, what, what's their names? The 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 New York FCS team, Wagner. I always forget their name. But uh, it, it's something where they're going to make everything very difficult for Notre Dame. And in that sense, Notre Dame has to be ready and they have to be. That's why efficiency is so important in this game because, look, we talk about them needed to create a couple big plays, and I truly believe that, right? Uh, Because that's something that Syracuse does really well, so you kind of need to flip the script on them in that department. But at the end of the day, Notre Dame's game is also built off of efficiency when they're rolling, when they're playing well offensively. And when you're an efficient football team, you can't have seven drives inside a a team's – on the other side of the team's field and only score three touchdowns. Like, you can't do that, right? Like, that's what makes a team stay in a football game or makes it win uglier than it has to be or makes you lose. Those those are the outcomes that happen when you don't finish off drives. Notre Dame needs to do that in this game because, again, this is something that Syracuse has shown that they do well. So in order to defeat a good Syracuse team, you have to make something that they do well and flip the script and make it a weakness in this football game. Finish off drives, finish off, finish off the the you know the red zone opportunities. Those things have kind of been a little bit of a, a Achilles heel to Notre Dame throughout the season for the most part, and they need to right that ship because you have the elements to be good at that, Brian. Like you have the elements. You have a huge tight end who's got a massive catch radius. You have a, a couple wide receivers that, if you use properly, have a lot of opportunities to do that. And then you have a good offensive line, and you have some powerful runners that should be able to finish in short yardage situations. So this is the game, a team that doesn't really shoot themselves in the foot much. You have to make some things that are usually difficult for teams that play them a little bit easy in this football game. Big key, big key in this and, one. And Ryan, everything you just said is, is why this is such a big game for Notre Dame. Because for if Notre Dame turns the corner offensively against this defense – It's not going to – because like the North Carolina game, I mean, you can kind of chalk that up to they're not very good on defense, and that's true. They're they're not very good on defense. Now, they've been better since Notre Dame played them, but they're still not very good on defense. And and you look at at, at different aspects of what Notre Dame likes to do. They're not a very good throwing team. They don't throw the ball very well. Syracuse is one of the 10 to 15 best pass defenses in the country. Their secondary is one of, without question, one of the 10 best. Now, I don't know if I could say I've seen enough teams to say they're top five there's still teams i need to watch more of but i i've seen enough teams to comfortably say they're top 10 and so they are good where notre dame has not been good so if notre dame performs well in these areas that we talked about it's not just a key to victory but a lot of what we talk about in these keys to victory recently has been not just winning this game but then getting yourself sort of springboard yourself into 
future success. And so I think that's what's important about this. All the things you just talked about, they're things that Syracuse is very good at that Notre Dame is not very good at. So if you have success there, it's going to be because you did something different, whether that be executed better, game plan adjustments. As I wrote in the midweek musings yesterday, Ryan, and I don't know if you agree with this or not, if you really break it down, as maddening as this offense has been, they're not that far off. This is not something that requires a massive transfusion of players. It doesn't require you to switch from the current scheme to an air raid. It's hit the open receivers that are there. Early in the season, it was because the line wasn't giving them protection. But if you just say, if they simply just hit the plays that were there, not even without changing a single thing schematically, hit the plays that are there, don't have dumb, dumb turnovers, and you're talking about you've got at least another touchdown against Ohio State. Let's say you still lose, but you have another touchdown. You have at least two more touchdowns against Marshall because you have one at the end of the first half and you have one in the fourth quarter. So that's a blowout win all of a sudden. You look at the next game against Cal. You had one big touchdown opportunity that you missed in that game. So that adds a touchdown to the board. North Carolina, you missed two big touchdown opportunities. You had a, the miss to Michael Mayer up the sideline, and then Aldrich Estime fumbles the ball into the end zone. So now yeah. you're talking about that game is now all of a sudden 59 points. Then you fast forward to the next week against BYU. I think for the most part, they took advantage of their opportunities that were there down the field, but then you miss the, the play against Logan Diggs. You miss him open for what would have been a touchdown. So all of a sudden, you know, 28 turns into 32. I mean, there's all types of different things that you look at and say, and then, of course, Stanford, there was missed opportunities. That's the one that you say there weren't as many opportunities there because the play calling was so bad. That's a game where it wasn't a whole lot different, maybe a field goal. And then last week against UNLV, there were tons mm -hmm. of opportunities to turn a 44-point outburst into a 62-point outburst. So the, whole, the point is, it's not like there hasn't been stuff there. Braden Lindsay's been wide open. Braden Lindsay should have six or seven touchdowns right now. Oh, easy. easy touchdowns. Like, not even like he's got to go make a play like he did against Cincinnati last year or Ohio State early. Like, where the dude's open by three, four yards. I mean, if not more. You know, there's been a there's been plenty of opportunities for this team to, to if they simply execute better, and that's where, you know, there's some validity to that comment. But the point is, the execution issues come from a lack of confidence, a lack of certainty in what they're doing that results in, that comes from, you know, too broad of scope from a play calling standpoint, you know, trying to have more volume, not enough being really good at something, all those type of things. The point is, it's not like this Notre Dame team needs to just reinvent themselves. They need mm -hmm. to make some tweaks, but then just hit the stuff that's there. And if they do that, then all of a sudden this team breaks out. Because I truly believe, I truly believe this. If Tommy Reese is willing to look in the mirror and say, you know what, this is on me. This is my fault, and I didn't do enough to really get the most out of this team. And I may I, I use this excuse and that excuse, but this is on me. And then he just makes tweaks. Again, you don't need to re revolutionize your offense. Just make some tweaks. Use RPOs, right? Mix up your run game a little bit more. Mix it up outside, inside. And, you know, maybe re rely a little bit more on your screen game because in, in your pocket movement with Drew Pine because he's not a big-armed guy. Those are right. all things within the scheme that we've seen at least a little bit of this year. If you simply just make those tweaks and then Drew Pine starts hitting just some of the throws that, that that he's not seeing or missing on, all of a sudden this offense becomes a two-touchdown better offense than what they've been. Just that. Yep. And if you can do it against this defense, then I start feeling really good about their ability to do it in future games. Because I still think this is the best defense they're going to face all year across the board. Clemson has, without question, the best linebacker, uh, uh, has the best defensive line. I mm -hmm. think the linebacker production is very similar. You know, I think Trenton Simpson's probably a better NFL prospect. Barrett Carter's mm -hmm. a better NFL prospect. But with where they are on their development right now, the Syracuse kids are no, are no, they, they belong in a conversation of who has the best linebacker court in the ACC. Secondary is not close. It's not even close. Yeah. Secondary is not, it's not no, nowhere in the same universe. So if you can do it this week, then, okay, it's something to build on, and this team can get some confidence. Because if they can make some tweaks and gain some confidence, this offense has better players than people give them credit for. And then I want I would like to hear what people have to say, but oh, it's, a, it's a talent problem, right? And so uh, you you have to think at some point in time it's going to happen. Just But, you know, I, I just said that two weeks ago, three weeks ago, four weeks ago. 
We'll see if it'll happen this week. But if it does, Ryan, that's what gives this team a chance to not just win, right? But it's like what I said to you on, was it Monday? I said, mm-hmm. dude, if Drew Pine has a good game, they're going to roll Syracuse. I'll say yeah. that publicly because there's stuff there. There are matchups there. We're like, man, Notre Dame should be able to thrive in that matchup because they mm-hmm. have unique weapons that other teams have not do not have that they've played. Whether or not they'll take advantage, I have I have very little confidence that they will do it, it but they should do it. And that's the fun thing about this matchup. I hope they'll do it because it'll be my yeah. first time in the Carrier Dome, and it'll be great to cover and and watch and enjoy well, enjoy the day. Your right? last we'll two games fans. haven't gone all that well, Ryan. So I, I I'm real. I was really rethinking I, t- calling Notre Dame and saying that they I, need to deny your credential request. I still blame my wife on that one. I still blame my wife on that one. But uh, okay. you know, so she, okay. she doesn't listen to this show, so I can. Well, blame hold on, on now. But show. your wife wasn't at the previous game that you were at. There was also a Notre Dame loss. Cincinnati last year. Yeah, she doesn't come to the games and they lose. Oh, because she point. doesn't. Yeah, come. So she doesn't come to the, the Syracuse games. game. Yep. Okay, so then nothing's changed. Well, they're screwed. I'm gonna have well, to it's, not a, it's, not a home, it's not a home. It's not a home game though. The okay. Don't okay. Fly anymore. And you're not going fly. as a fan. You're going to work. So that'll be hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. Now it, it's a. I feel like Syracuse defense might be a little bit of a truth serum though for this yes. uh, opportunity, Brian. Like it's sure. it's one of those things where if it doesn't happen now, I, I right. If, if if it doesn't happen now. I'm not going to get excited about it happening against Navy. Sure. Right. Like I'm not going to get excited about it happening, happening against Boston college. Right. Like this they're is, not good. Right. This they're is a make good. it or break it time. Right. Like right. It, we, we have, we have backed up and I will, I will keep back in this, even if they don't play well, that there's not a talent problem in Notre right. Dame. Just been, I've been super. Not relative about who's that. on their schedule this year. Yes. Is there a talent yes. problem to go beat Georgia? Sure. Right now, yes, there is. sure. Right, there's you there's know? not a talent problem to go beat Syracuse at Syracuse this week, or there's Stanford, or Marshall, yes. or yep. right, exactly, or even exactly. Clemson. To be honest yeah. with you, yep. so anyway, that's uh that's the interesting part of it, Ryan. Is is it it just comes down to you didn't do what you needed to do to get the most out of this group, and we'll find out if that changes or not.